Hello and welcome to the studio. Here we are, day five of Oil Tober. Can't believe it's been five days already. Oh my god. Our next prompt is Discovery. Thank you, Don Gridley, for the prompt. This one was really. It kind of threw me because it's a very vague word. Discovery can mean so many things. So I actually sat down and had an afternoon chat with my housemate and we spitballed a whole bunch of different ideas. And then we got into this weird segue where we were talking about discovery and how elephant skulls were originally mistaken for cyclopses because they've got this big opening in the front, which is actually the nasal cavity. Um, and then we were talking about other skulls and how Oh yes, like T-Rex skulls and dinosaur skulls were the basis for the belief of dragons. And the second we started getting into skulls, I'm like, I'm painting a skull. I love skulls. Skulls are one of my go-to still life painting subjects when I don't know what I want to paint. And they're definitely something that's very intriguing because they've got organic form. Everything has different shapes, different turns. And because most skulls are a fairly neutral colour, like they're white or pale bone sort of colour, yeah, they capture the light beautifully and they allow you to really sort of analyse shadows and reflections. Very happy with how he came out. I only used one colour in Danthrone Blue by Langridge Oil Paints, with white of course. And day six. Remember how it was beautiful and sunny in the last video? Now it's 10 degrees and I'm freezing my bum off. It's so cold. Melbourne is a bit special that way here in Australia. Every different kind of weather three times a day. Our next prompt is Just Survive. Now, this one was difficult for a completely different reason than the last prompt. It's very deep and very raw. So I ended up falling on one of my favorite films, Wally, -E, the Pixar animated film, and remembering that little plant that Wally finds. And when it comes to survival, considering that plant grew inside of a closed fridge in a post-apocalyptic world, that was definitely survival. And if the little plant could survive that whole movie and keep going, hell, we could probably survive 2020, right? I started using a very realistic photograph of a boot, but as can happen with any painting, sometimes you spend a lot of time in a composition and it just doesn't do what you want it to, so sometimes you got to be a little drastic. that you don't lose hope because shaking things up, turning things around physically can sometimes really show you what a better outcome could be.
37. Now today I'm taking my prompts and all my painting stuff on the road. Um, I'm actually going to be spending the night at my sister's house. So to give you a little bit of background in COVID-19 times here in Melbourne, Australia, we're currently on stage four lockdown with, I think, sort of edits. One of those edits is if you're single, you're allowed to nominate one person to be your bubble buddy and be able to come over and socialize. So I am my sister's bubble buddy. So about once a week at the moment, I've been going over to her place, which is actually near the beach. Um, even though it's a drizzly rainy day, it's still lovely to be able to drive near the beach. I'm allowed to hang out in her house. We have to wear masks the whole time. Um, we have to maintain distance within the house, hand washing, hand sanitizer, the whole shebang. But it's worth it to be able to see her in person, which is something I missed so much. And these sort of little hangouts, as much as we can't go to restaurants or go out or do much, it, it's still entirely worth it. So this time round, she's going to pick out my prompt for me. So everyone say hi. Here we go. What did she pull? Oh, that's right. Exotic. Earlier this year on Netflix, a special came out that I'm sure everyone will have thought of the second they hear the word exotic. I didn't want to paint Joe Exotic from Tiger King, so we decided to go with a tiger, which I actually really love because as we grew up, my older sister, uh, she had a soft toy tiger that was her favorite soft toy and she took it with her like to bed every night all that sort of thing everyone's got a favorite soft toy when they're a kid so his name was tiger very original and i thought that was absolutely perfect to then be painting a real life tiger in an attempt to this was the only photo i could find of her cuddling tiger but i really thought it was a nice cute little tiger she said he, she got him from adelaide zoo um here in australia so yeah, a little tribute to the original tiger. This is Poppy, the real life exotic animal in the house, or one of them. There's also another cat called Maggie, but I didn't get her on camera. So yeah, Poppy was a good little studio buddy sitting behind me. <laughs> and now we're back home for day eight. So one more prompt for this video and it's a fun one. I remember this one. prompt is wine. Thank you, Heather. Heather submitted a lot of prompts, so I had to print them off a number of times, so that's why the other words are scratched out, so they're in separately in the bucket. Okay, wine. So yes, I am a wine drinker, and my idea was one of my favourite bottles. It's a bone dry rosé available here in Australia and I haven't had it lately but I do feel like it and I remember I particularly like the label because the label has a deer skull on it um, which is stunning and now since I had the idea I researched it they actually do a sparkling as well so I'm too, super intrigued by that one but that one had a cow skull so I thought I'd stick with the deer skull 
because it's a little bit longer, a little bit more elegant. And I actually love that the background of the label on the bottle was this dark navy color with flecks of gold. So this piece of paper is actually the darkest tone I have in the dodgy paper. And it's got the little flecks of gold and copper. So yeah, I wanted to sort of bring a different version of the inspired artwork from the label together. Touches are just those little feathers coming down from the antlers. This one was quite involved, I'll be honest, but I had a lot of fun with it. Definitely my vibe. Also, after looking at this for a couple of hours, enjoying it, I may have bought some wine. So thank you, Blue Pyrenees Estate. I'm looking forward to it coming in the mail. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me for this next batch of Inktober paintings. I can't believe we're already eight days in. It's gone so fast, but we've still got heaps more to go and I'm really, really happy with the works that are coming out. These are fast, sketchy paintings, but they're refreshing and they're all different subject matter and they really make me think on my feet. So thank you so much. Please hit subscribe so you can keep up with the project. And yes, all the pieces will be for sale on October the 31st. So scroll down and sign up to my mailing list to be the first to find out when they're going on sale. Thank you so much. Bye.